In this video, we're going to take a look at absolute and conditional convergence. In this section, you will be very glad if you have been continuing to update your little formula sheet so that you have all of these tests and strategies ready to go. If you haven't, take the time to do that now and make it easier on yourself. So this is where things get real because we're going to look at series that are not alternating series, but they do have both positive and negative terms and it makes it difficult for us to determine convergence. So the reason I'm saying things are about to get real is because in each of these examples, we're going to be using these new strategies that we've learned about whether or not the sum will converge absolutely or conditionally, but this is where we have to take into account all of our previous tests and strategies. So all of the things that we've learned, the direct comparison test, the alternating series test, the p-value, the p-series, the geometric series, any of these are fair game as we're working through these, this process. So this is why I said make sure you have that sheet next to you as you're doing these questions. So here's what, here's the new stuff. If the sum of our absolute value, and again, we're going to take the absolute value because we have both positive and negative terms and it makes it more difficult. So if the sum of our absolute value converges, then our original function before we took the absolute value also converges and converges absolutely. However, if the original function converges, but our absolute value diverges, then the original function is said to converge conditionally. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to see whether or not this series converges absolutely or conditionally, or if it diverges. So we're going to take it step by step. So this one, we're not going to have to move on to a step two because I just want to look at the initial step. And the initial step is determine if the sum of the absolute value converges, and if so, the original series will converge absolutely. So what that means is I'm going to take the sum as n goes from one to infinity of the absolute value of my original argument. So I'm taking the absolute value of negative one to the n plus one over n squared. And if I take the absolute value, the numerator which is alternating negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, the absolute value is not going to alternate because the absolute value of both positive one and negative one is one. So I can take my numerator out of the absolute value sign because the absolute value will always be one. My denominator is n squared and n squared because it is squared is always positive because if n were positive or negative, both values would be positive. So I can take that out of the absolute value as well. So now I have a brand new series. This series is one over n squared. And here's where all of those previous things that we've learned will come into play because this is essentially like starting over with a new question and saying, hey, here's a series, does this converge or not? And that's when all of those rules that we've learned will come into play. For instance, in this case, I have a P series. A P series is where the base is changing, but the exponent is remaining the same. So this is a P series where P is equal to two, which is greater than one. And therefore this series converges. And if that series converges, according to my rule, the sum of the absolute value just converged. Therefore, the original series converges absolutely. So therefore, the original series as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared converges absolutely. Oops, absolutely. For this example, I want to look at a series that does not converge absolutely. 
So we are going to begin just as we did on our last example. We're looking at the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity, and we're going to look at the absolute value of the series given. And that's going to give us a brand new series to determine convergence for. Just as in our last example, our numerator, which is negative 1, alternating between negative 1 and positive 1, will end up being just 1, because negative 1 and positive 1 both have an absolute value of positive 1. For my denominator, n plus 3, knowing that n begins at 1, so 1 plus 3 is 4 and will continue on to infinity, we know that that will always be positive, since 4 is positive and it will continue to increase. So this is our brand new series, and now I want to determine convergence of that series, which means I have to take a look at what test do I know that I could use to determine convergence for the series with. So I am going to choose to use the limit comparison test, and the limit comparison test tells me that if I take a look at an a sub n and a b sub n that are both greater than zero. So I'm going to look at this uh, series being a sub n or representing a sub n. And then for b sub n, I'm going to take a look at one over n, which is the harmonic series, which we already know diverges. So if I can take a look at those two, and if it's true that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n is some value that is finite, meaning it's not infinity, and positive, which is where greater than zero comes in, then they are either both going to converge or both diverge. So again, I'm looking at the fact that I know 1 over n diverges. So let's take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity. And then a sub n is 1 over n plus 3. I'm dividing that by 1 over n, which means I'm actually multiplying by n over 1. And that gives me the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus 3. And again, you can use that dividing by, or multiplying by 1 over n trick. And that would give me the limit as n approaches infinity. n over n would just be 1, n over n would be 1, and then 3 over n. And as I approach infinity, I'm going to end up essentially with 1 over 1. So I'm ending up with a limit of 1, which means that it is true that I have a limit that is both positive and finite, and therefore, by the limit comparison test, I can say that only, remember, I'm only looking at this guy and not at my original series. I can say that this series diverges. So this series, and whoops, n equals 1 to infinity. 1 over n plus 3 diverges, again, by limit comparison with 1 over n. Now, what does that tell me? That does not tell me, again, that my original series diverges. It doesn't tell me that. The only thing that tells me is that it does not converge absolutely. And you already knew that was going to be the case because I told you when we got started. For the second part of this, I have to now look at the series itself. So if I look at the series itself, as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 3, I have to look at what series test, I'm sorry, what test can I use to determine convergence of the series itself? So I'm going to use the alternating series test. Whoops, sorry about the scribbles alternating series test. And the alternating series test says for the first step, I need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of everything except for the alternating uh, part of my series. So I'm looking at the limit at 1 over n plus 3, which of course is 0 because as the denominator increases, the value of the term itself will decrease. And then for 2, so check, check, for 2, 
I'm looking at does a sub n plus 1, is it true that that is less than or equal to a sub n? And again, that would be 1 over n plus 4. Is it true that it's less than or equal to 1 over n plus 3? And of course, that is true also because I am increasing the denominator, which decreases the overall number. So what that tells me is that the series itself converges. What does this tell me overall? So my overall is I need to decide, did it converge conditionally or did it diverge? Well, because the absolute value diverged, we took out the absolutely, but the original series converges. And so that means, therefore, the series converges conditionally. And that's all we have to do. So let's take a look at our last example. And it, this is going to look super familiar because it's really close to the last one that we did. And again, we're going to start with our first step, which is to take the summation from one to infinity of the absolute value of our original function. And just like on our last example, the absolute value we'll take care of the negative 1 to the n plus 1 in the, in the numerator. And since n begins at 1 and goes to infinity, n will always be positive and I can take it outside of the absolute value. I can also do the same for 5n plus 1. And then remember, here is where we stop and say, all right, this is a brand new question. Using this brand new question, what test might I use to determine if that new series, the absolute value series, converges or diverges. And I could use the nth term test. And the nth term test says, take the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 5n plus 1. And what I'll find is that limit is 1 fifth by using the influential terms, which is not 0. So therefore, the absolute value diverges. Which of course means we move on to step two, but guess what I'm going to do in step two? If I look at the alternating series test, and the alternating series test says, all right, first find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is n over 5n plus 1, and that has to be 0, and we just determined that it was 1 fifth, which is not 0, then not only does my original or my absolute value function diverge, but my original function divergence, diverges as well. So therefore, this series diverges by the nth term. Oh, <laughs> the nth term test. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the ratio test.